Emma Massingale, horse trainer and adventurer. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Well, I should say welcome back to myself to my channel. <laughs> it's been so long since I posted any videos. I do apologise for the fact I haven't posted anything in absolutely ages. And that is because Jeremy and I have been working on something for about the last 18 months and all of which I can say absolutely nothing about. <laughs> so, so it's not really very helpful for making useful content. But it is now 2023 and I thought we've got lots to share with you of stuff that I can share. Like I've got a whole new team of little ponies, which is very exciting. And so today I'm going to introduce you to those guys. Um, everyone is just coming out of winter. So everybody's coats, are, they are hairy, they are muddy, and they are most definitely not looking their best. But as the journey goes along this summer, and they get their lovely summer coats, and they've all had a bath, and they all get all primped up and trained as well, they're gonna look absolutely fantastic, and really something quite special because of their rare coat color. So first of all, I'm gonna go and catch them. I've only had some of them about ooh, a week or 10 days now. Jeremy went off to Sweden to collect them for me. So let's catch them up, and I'll tell you a little bit more about them. It's still very muddy. Look at the mud. Look at the mud. Oh, everything feels so much better when the sun is shining. Oh, look, there they are. So I've only just introduced them to Albert and Ernie and the rest of my crew. The first week they were just with each other and with Seb and Bridget, who also came from the same stud. So they actually knew Bridget. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wish I had the camera the other way around. Jeremy just went completely fell over the, <laughs> the jump pole in the field. <laughs> that would have been way better video than this is probably going to turn out to be. Anyway, yeah, so they've only just been together for a little while and then I put them in with Albert and Ernie and the, uh, my other miniatures and my other Shetlands um, because now I feel like they need to sort of come together a bit more as a group and also it's more convenient with their management because obviously we're coming into spring so the spring grass is going to be coming. So I need them not to have too much grass and the management is easier if they all live together. So let's catch them up. Hi, oh hi. Hello. You're very sweet, aren't you? Right, let's put a heckle on you. Oh, good girl. Doo -doo -doo. This is one. So this is one of the new ones. I can't quite decide on her stable name. Obviously they've all got lovely official names, but I usually give them a, a nickname or a stable name that sort of fits in with the rest of the herd. And this is, oh, hello you. This one does actually have a name already. So she's called Sparrow. And I'm not sure, 100% sure if I'll keep that name, but um, she's the youngest, well, younger, youngest of the fillies. So we'll just put this on her. Okay, that's you. Here right, girl. Oh, you're so fluffy. Look how fluffy you are. Good. Right, other ones. This is Bridget. She is, I'm not allowed to have favourites, but she'll be my favourite girl at the moment. She's so funny. She's such a massive character. And um, just she's just really a humorous girl. She's not particularly mayorish. Well, actually, no, she, she is quite mayorish. She's quite feisty. <laughs> but she's not mayorish in the sense of that, you know, she loves being cuddled and she loves you to poke her and she always wants attention. Although this one, this new one here, she's getting that way as well. So it's quite nice. I love their personalities and their sort of natural friendliness. So cute. Hi. Mm, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Right. Who else have we got? Doodly doo. -doo. Oh, there you are, Zibby. Do do do. <laughs> this is Seb. So Seb is the first one I had, and so he drives, and he's the one I do my skiing behind. He was a stallion, but we um, gelded him last year because, well, because they were all a bit of a pain as a stallion. They were all fighting a lot and biting each other and he was kept getting hurt. And I thought we were gonna have ponies with missing ears and things. So I gelded them. And then we need one more. Oh, there she is, hi. Hello, you. Oh, so this one here, this is Margot. Now Margot, I have named already because she was really shy at the beginning. She was, and she wouldn't let me stroke her at the beginning very much unless she was in a small space. And um, she certainly wouldn't let me put a heckler on the first few days. And, and that's nothing about, you know, from where 
anything that's happened to her in the past. I think she's just naturally a bit more shy and they have this wonderful life in Sweden where they live as a big natural herd. And I think maybe she just sort of distanced herself a bit from sort of being handled or whatever. And for whatever reason, she's just a bit shy, but she's, she's coming around really, really lovely. And um, she now likes to be cuddled and stroked and things as well. Right, I think that's everybody, that's all five. So let me just now round them up. Bridge, come back here, Bridge. Stan likes to be involved in everything. Bridget, Bridget was loose. As you can see, they're all a little bit um, feisty at the moment. You know, they're a bit tetchy of each other and they're all a bit, and that's perfectly natural. You know, you'd expect that. They're all just coming together. There's a lot of herd politics and stuff to sort out. Um, and I'm not worried about that at all. It's something I'll just let them sort out as we go along. Now, let's see if I can get the right ones out. One, two. Stan wants to be involved with everything. Three, come on, go. One, two, three, come on, let's see. Come on, go. So I'm gonna tie these guys up. Now, tying horses up is like one, probably one of the most important skills any young horse can or pony can learn because it's not just about being tied up here at home. It's about standing in the lorry or trailer it's about being patient when they're working in whatever form they're going to work in later on. So it's a really useful skill. And what I'm going to do, because I have got Seb and Bridget, who already have more skills than the new ones, I'm going to use them to help me a little bit. So I'm going to tie Seb right in the middle um, because he'll work as a bit of an anchor. And then I won't have the three new ones all faffing and, and messing about. Um, hopefully Seb can help just break that up a little bit and he'll just stand there and go to sleep and eat a bit of hay. So we're going to put Sebby here. Do, do, do. Come here guys. And then I'm going to put Bridget on the outside. So right down here on the outside. You three, hold on, we're in a knot. And Bridget. Then we'll put, we'll put little Sparrow here. So she's the youngest, so between Seb and Bridge. Seems like a good idea. Now I like to tie my ponies and horses quite short. I don't like them to have really long ropes. Um, they've just got a quick release knot on there because if they're on a really long rope, they have all that freedom to sort of swing. If they pour, they can get their foot over the rope. They can just tie themselves up in all sorts of knots. I think if you're gonna be tied up and be still, be tied up and be still. Let's not be faffing around too much. So let's put these two girls over here. Do, 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 do. And here are my little cherubs. Now this is the first time they have ever been tied up, so I'm not quite sure, you know, they haven't got a lot of skills in that yet. So let's tie this little one here. Here you go. Tie her up there. And then I'm going to tie little Margot on the outside. Now Margot is uh, definitely the, the most sort of shy and probably let's just say the most nervous of them all at the moment. That doesn't mean to say she's always going to be, it's just how she is right now. So I'm going to tie her on the outside and then hopefully she won't feel too trapped. She'll have a bit of space to get away from the others as well and, and just feel more comfortable out there. From what I know about them so far, this is setting them up the best order I know to give them the best outcome. And obviously the outcome I want is that they just relax and let me do a bit of work on them and not get too uh, faffy and stressing and moving up and down and around and around. So we just want them to relax. I absolutely love this colour. It's like my absolute favourite. Not only because aren't they just going to blend brilliantly with the mud in the winter, <laughs> but also because it's really beautiful. But it's, it's actually, they're called Silver Dapple. That's the colour. And it's actually a dilute jean on a black base coat. So they're, they're, it's, a, it's a dilute jean on a black pony. So they could have easily been born just plain black but they're not, they're all lovely and silver. And silver dapple means they've got this, well, it will be white <laughs> when he's clean. He has a lovely white mane and tail and this dark chocolate color. Now they can have more dapples. I'll show you over on Bridget. You can see here, she's got a much more dapply coat. Now they've all still very much got their winter coats at the moment. Oh look, <laughs> come here, ping pong. <laughs> this is ping pong, <laughs> she's a silver, Chocolate silver dapple. Jackson, look how cute it is, look. Look, 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 look how cute it is. <laughs> so much cuteness. I'll introduce you to all the dogs another day. <laughs> She's 
steal it. She's gonna give Seb a hard time. <laughs> Seb, are you scared of her? Is she scary? And you. Right. Do 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 do. Boy, Seb, you better jump. I'll put some pictures in here of Seb and Bridget last summer so you can see what they look like when they've got their amazing summer coats. Obviously at the moment they're very hairy, I mean their coats are really thick and they've been turned out with no rugs on as well so they are not looking at their best at this precise moment but they do look absolutely beautiful in the summer months. So all of these, po no not all of these ponies, <laughs> not all of these ponies, all these ponies bar one, bar a little sparrow, and actually Anne has the sire of sparrow in her studs, but all of the ponies are bred by a wonderful lady called Anne Pagmar in Sweden, and she, I'll put a link to her stud down below so you can check out her um, Shetland stud, it's amazing, she's got hundreds of ponies and they're all beautiful natured, really top quality ponies, really fantastic, really lovely natured and yeah, just super, super nice Shetlands. Um, she bred all of these guys and I managed to buy Seb a couple of years ago. So Seb would now be a five-year-old this year. And then last year, Anne offered me Bridget. And of course, naturally I had to jump at the opportunity. And then when the opportunity arose this year, she said, would I like the others? <laughs> I thought, well, I can't possibly turn it down because the idea of having a Liberty team and maybe a driving team as well, and who knows what we'll get up to in the future. Um, but of this color seemed like a, an absolutely amazing idea because it would be really unique and they'll look super special for my shows and doing adverts and things like that. Um, so the first thing I've got to do with these guys now is to get start getting them used to being handled, used to being cleaned. The, these two ladies, this one here, who, let's call her Etta for now, because I might, that might stick. Um, so Etta and Margot, they are both three-year-old mares this spring. Um, and so they're just gonna start their training. They're sort of ready to do a little bit. They won't ever break a sweat, but they'll um, just start mixing in, doing bits and bobs as we go. So they just get the idea of being part of, part of the team. Good girls, aren't you? Seb, the plan for this year is to do loads more skiing. I really need him to be my anchor with that. I mean, he's a fantastic pony. He's just like Nala is for my Connemara's. He's got a really sort of old head on, on young shoulders and just seems to like soak up the atmospheres at shows. I mean, he's just, he's really, really cool. He's just an absolute dude. And I think he's, hopefully he's gonna like having his own harem of women. Sparrow, <laughs> Sparrow. Excuse me, excuse me. Sparrow, Sparrow over here. <laughs> She's only two, um, aren't you? You little, little feisty girl. She's very funny. And she, um, we put her in the stable and she just tries to jump straight out over the top. And it's not something that she's learnt here in a few days. That is definitely a skill she has mastered elsewhere, isn't it? Hmm? Yes, I think you might pick that skill up somewhere else. And as soon as you shut the door, she just puts her front feet over the door. Um, I'll put a little clip in here of her doing it on the, the first day I unloaded her. Um, but she, I actually really like that about her. I really like her sort of feisty, bra she's really brave. She's a bit sort of, you know, antsy about stuff. And I, I hope that'll turn into something quite cool. We're doing some tricks and some, yeah, just some fun commercials and things. And obviously being brave is a really useful, useful attribute for any pony to have. And my darling Bridget needs a serious bath. <laughs> no, my lovely Bridget, she has just started to learn to drive. So she's been starting to drive with Charlie the donkey and I'll put a little clip in here now of that so you can have a look at that. Um, she was quite terrified of the donkey to start with. <laughs> I don't think she'd obviously seen a donkey maybe in Sweden. Um, and here I don't necessarily, they don't all mix. So even though she's probably been in one of the multiple fields with Charlie, it doesn't mean to say she's seen him up close and personal, harnessed up and next to him. So we've been working on that, but Charlie's probably my most experienced driving pony so he works really well to have as an anchor alongside Sebi. Um, she's also going to learn to do some skiing and just started doing some rollerblading behind her as well so lots to come from her but she is prone to putting on weight just like me she likes eating <laughs> and um, so we've got to keep right on top of her this summer in this spring I've got to make sure that I keep working her a lot and giving her lots of variety to her work because the tendency with these ponies that are a bit inclined to get a bit fat is to just work and work and work them or restrict their grass and grazing and I, I really want her to be able to run with the younger ones because I want them to become a team but I don't want her to get laminitis um, so we've got to manage that quite carefully so we're going to keep increase her exercise but we're going to do it in loads of different creative ways so that she thinks it's fun she thinks it's interesting and she doesn't see me coming in the field and think no thank you very much 
Right, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to introduce them to the hot horse shower because I really need to start reclaiming them from the mud and winter conditions. I need to fit some rugs to them as well to make sure I know what size rugs to get for the new ones. Um, because even though I know some of you will be thinking you shouldn't be rugging Shetland ponies, my job is to do, I do demonstrations and I do commercials, well I do, I do more commercials than I do demonstrations, but we do do things in public, you know, a lot of what I do is public and they have to look really fantastic. So although they look au naturel right now, actually for camera, being on camera, being on film, being uh, out in public, they really do need to be primped up, shiny and also be able to wear a rug because that's part of being trained as well. You know, being wrapped up in a rug is a really nice way to start them off in terms of getting used to wearing perhaps harness, the pack saddles, things like that. So I'm going to do some rug fitting as well just to check what size they are and um, let's just get to know them a little bit better. As you can see there's five of these guys here so we've got the four mares and then lovely little subbers, my one gelding but I also I have a sixth let me show you. <laughs> this is Luna the Labrador. <laughs> Luna Puna. Luna Puna. Luna the Labrador. Are you a Labradorable? This is Hugo. <laughs> or Huggy as he is affectionately known to us now. And he is only, as you can tell, he's only a, a nearly a yearling. He is extremely fluffy. And he's just starting to get his white mane and his tail is just going white now. You can see his little white bits. Um, and I think I'm actually going to geld him. He is a colt at the moment, so hence why he's not with the others. But I think, um, well, I know, I've booked him in, <laughs> so unless I change my mind. But um, he is booked in to be castrated, which means he'll become a gelding and then he can run with the, the mares and the others. I was thinking about keeping him as a stallion, potentially, because there's a little bit of me that regrets <laughs> gelding Seb. Um, but I think probably looking at the bigger picture, they have so much more fun as a gelding because he can just rag around with the rest of them and you know it, it's hard to have just one stallion um, so unless I go and get some mares as well and then we start doing the whole breeding thing, um, I don't want him to live on his own and he is quite culty already. I've got him, he's living with Claude at the moment um, and that's only because Claude was a stallion until last year as a five-year-old so he he's able to cope with his sort of bitey culty boy games that they do um, but I think I think probably it'd be best to just geld him and then have him join the rest but he's for the future so he's obviously just gonna hang out in the field probably get up to all sorts of mischief and just keep developing character he's really he's quite a naturally quite bold he's very friendly um, and I think he'll turn out to be a fantastic addition. Um, I don't think there's going to be any need to do any training with him in particular this year. I feel like he can just join in if he wants to and hang out and cause havoc in the field. If you don't, what do you think? Is that a good plan, Hugs? Is that a good plan, Hugs? Is it? Yes, you're so cute. Look how fluffy you are. Hmm? You're going to escape having a bath today. Good boy, Hugs. You're very cute. Hi, Labrador. Hey Luna Luna. Oh, poor Doon. You chase the dog? He likes chasing the dogs. Look, he's like, oh, come here, dog. Come here, I need to chase you. <laughs> <laughs> Luna, is he going to get you, Poons? Oh, Labrador. What is he doing? Look at you. They look so scruffy at this time of year when they've got all this hairy coat. <laughs> they look so scruffy. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Hey, buddy. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> right, let's go back to the others. A couple of weeks ago when Anne really kindly offered me the other girls to join my herd so that I could make a team of these lovely silver dapples, I thought well it's quite difficult to get to transporters to bring them over and it's really expensive and so I thought I'd drive over myself and go and pick them up from Sweden <laughs> on, a map, on a map it doesn't look that far it's just you know go to Dover and then sort of north a bit and then right a bit and Bob's your uncle you're there well anyway that wasn't quite the case so I was about to leave literally had everything ready and packed up ready to go and then my Labrador puppy decided to have an injury and get injured and so then she was on three legs and then I was panicking about leaving her because the puppies are all a little bit needy at the moment, they need me. And so Jeremy very kindly, <laughs> literally, 
with no notice whatsoever. <laughs> Um, jumped in the van and trailer and then set off on this epic mammoth journey all the way to Anne's and um, I think it was, it was quite a trip. <laughs> it's quite a road trip. It was, I think it took him sort of two days to get there because it's actually a very very long way <laughs> and then he had a lovely time at Anne's seeing all the ponies and um, looking at all the stallions and she's got I think um, well between 30 and 40 foals due this year this spring so that's that's an incredible number. Um, and she's got these sort of lovely fields where I think Jeremy went to help put out some hay and just doing some normal jobs but having a look at, at what it's like having a stud farm over in Sweden. I was really disappointed I couldn't get there and I'm going to have to fly over there this spring when she's foaling I think to go and have a look and, and see all the new Shetland foals that are born. Um, but then he managed to pick them up, he picked Sparrow up on the way and then they went up there and had all their vets inspections and all that sort of boring old paperwork stuff that you have to do. Lots and lots of paperwork to get to import horses into the UK now. It's actually quite a quite a difficult process. Um, I ended up using an agency called Shelley Ashman Agents and they are absolutely brilliant at doing all the logistics. They sort out um, the import papers, you have to pay VAT and you have to do, it's all, you know, lots and lots and lots of paperwork, which I won't bore you to death with, but just know it is not a simple process. <laughs> it's very long-winded. When Jeremy got to Dover um, we heard that there was going to be a strike the next day so we had to quickly make a decision to um, just jump on the ferry, the only ferry we could get hold of. I was on the phone to all these ferry companies to try and get a booking and um, we managed to get a booking with Irish ferries to come over so that we could get back because we didn't want to get stuck over in France for an extra day. Um, he'd already by this point been away about a week. <laughs> and. Um, so anyway, he got back and the ponies, we unloaded the ponies and they travelled so well. I mean, they had so much space in the trailer. They could all eat, drink, they could lie down if they wanted to because naturally they, they are quite small. So they were able to be put into compartments and, um, and they all travelled really, really well. No side effects from the journey at all. Um, they've all, all travelled really well. My next job on my list is to start washing these tails. Now, Seb, being a gelding, as you can see, he's the end of his tail, I mean, his tail is very dirty just through the mud. Like you can see all, all the mud where it's been dragging in the mud. I like them to have long tails and I do wash their tails really regularly. Believe it or not, I have washed this within the last 10 days. So it's just because we've been so wet and muddy here this winter, it just keeps getting re, re covered in mud. But as you can see, his tail isn't stained. And when I wash it in a minute, you'll see it'll go lovely and white. Their tails go absolutely bright white, the manes and tails do. Now, the difference, we've got mares now. Mares, Look at this colour, it's like yellow, it's stained, it's gross, it is actually really grim. <laughs> and um, most of my horses are geldings, so they don't pee in their tails, whereas the mares all tend to pee in their tails, which makes them very stained, this colour. So I'm going to have to use some special shampoo to try and lift it. And if anyone's got any tips, <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna need them. Um, if anyone's got any tips on how to take out the staining in mares' tails, because um, if you look at the top, it's lovely. You know, it's gonna be that nice white because you think this is just dirt, this is natural dirt, whereas this is naturally peed on. Um, but I would like it to go all this colour, you know, I want it to be all white and lovely. So at the moment, my theory is to use NAF Show Off Shampoo, which is designed for greys and which is what I use on all of my Connemaras. And it's absolutely brilliant. Like one wash, they can go from looking like mud monsters to show white ready um, and in one wash. So I'm going to go for it with that. I'm going to use that today, try and get their tails a little bit whiter. And I think I'm probably just going to have to wash them like every day for two weeks or something like that and try and get the staining out. But if you have got any tips or anything that you use that is really really good and works well can you put it in the comments because I might need some more help <laughs> let's get started let's get them cleaned up if you have horses you need one of these this hot horse shower I don't even know I can't even begin to imagine how I managed my life before <laughs> it's the best bit of kit because Horses don't like being washed in cold water any more than I would, or you would, I'm quite sure. If I ran after you with a cold hose, you'd see me running in the other direction. Uh, and horses are no different. So if you want them to stand nice and still and be washed regularly and, and enjoy having a bath, I highly recommend getting one of these. Just takes a normal six kilo gas bottle. The gas lasts ages and um, it's just really effective and brilliant. Another top tip, if you're washing horses, Use exfoliating gloves. These are just normal, cheap, human exfoliating gloves, but they're much better than a sponge or using a brush because you can really put the, pour the soap onto your hand 
and then because they're a little bit coarse you know for exfoliating you can really rub it in really well and um yeah brilliant bit of kit especially for horses like washing around their ears and their face as well i'm not going to do that today with these guys but um you know i call my big horses you know when i wash them reach up around their heads and ears and eyes and you can really you know be really accurate with them and um it's like them having a little scratch and they enjoy it rather than attacking them with a bit of wet sponge and not being able to get much off i'm going to start by washing sebi because of the noise and everything else these guys have not ever met the hot horse shower yet or heard it or experienced it and obviously it makes a bit of a hissing noise when the water's coming out so by doing Seb and Bridget first they'll get an idea for the noise and then I'll just quietly do those other girls there and then Margot I'm not even gonna even if I think she's gonna be fine I'm gonna go with what my first instinct was and that's to put some hot water in a bucket and wash her tail with a bucket for today and if I think actually she probably would have been fine then next time I can do it like that but there's nothing worse than first time first thing and thinking I wish I'd gone a bit easier and just used a bucket. So I'm just going to do that straight away and then hopefully she'll think it's okay and we're not trying to attack her with soap and water. Just waiting for the water to warm up. going to go along and put a little bit extra rub a little bit extra into each of their tails now this will give them a really good scrub so little Margot is going to dunk her tail in the bucket slightly less terrifying good girl and then just drip some water out around the top there good girl good girl it's okay Start to wash off. Let's rinse the last bits off, Margay. The next thing I've got to do is get them used to wearing a rug and um, I don't have any rugs for them at the moment um, but I took an educated guess, bearing in mind I've got a lot of ponies and had a lot of ponies over the years, so on the sizing, so I've guessed a size which I think will fit her, if not it might fit her, <laughs> and then I can work out the rest of them but because they haven't worn a rug before what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fit to her and I'm going to use an old rug of Ernie's, I think this is Ernie's, and I'm just going to gently place it on a, using a, like a cooler rug or a fleecy rug or even just a numner or a bit of your own jumper or something like that is a good place to start because you don't want to sort of terrify them into wearing one. So I'm just going to gently put it on her and see and give a little stroke with it and, um, and then just put it on her. It doesn't matter if it doesn't fit. It's more about just making sure that she's not going to mind because I don't want her to, to have a panic. And as you can see, that is too small, <laughs> but she doesn't mind. So I feel happy to just fit the other rug to her. Um, I've got a, just a, I really quite like these. I bought them one each for Seven Bridge. I do quite like a bit of matchy matchy. So they are all going to made the same. Um, this is just a Bukas Smartex sort of rain, rain sheet. It's um, got no filling whatsoever. It's literally just a waterproof sheet to help keep them clean. I'm going to take the tag off it so it doesn't look, because it will fit somebody and then we'll just check out how we're doing on sizing all rugs do come you know they are all slightly different in cut and design as well so you know you find some rugs come up bigger than others um, and so I just want to check I'm just going to gently put that on her don't want to just lob it on and see how we think oh it looks quite good on the size front to start with Ooh, what do you think of that she's like oh so I'll just do that we'll give that a little do up at the front it's got really nice attachments at the front so these rugs are designed for little Shetlands and little ponies. Though they do do a big pony version as well. That looks quite nice. Yeah, that looks good. This is actually a full foot 
and because she's only a three-year-old she will grow a little bit more this summer and fill out a bit more as well so I think that looks quite a good fit on her it's quite nice comes down nicely and it's plenty got plenty of room over her backside but I don't like them really tight um, so I think that's perfect size for her good girl now I have to work out, so I would say that Margot is going to be the same size as her but I suspect Sparrow is going to actually need the size down um, because I think this is going to swamp Sparrow but we could try it on her and see, Sparrow is another one who's quite brave um, I'm not going to chuck it on Margot because I do need to do a bit of training with her away from being tied up um, to just make sure she's okay with it So I'll just put it on bridge for a second. So this is actually the next size down from the black rug, the turnout rug. So, and oh, it's difficult, isn't it? It's, when they're a bit in between sizes. So this actually fits her really fine now, but it's not going to be long and she's going to grow out of it. So bearing that in mind, let's just try the next, the four foot on her and see if we can get away with it. I think what I might do is I might use an old three foot nine that I've had of Ernie's just to see her through the summer and then and but only buy her one this size I think because you know it's not even though this is going to swamp her now she's going to fill out loads this summer and then it'll be a waste yeah that looks a bit like a dress you've got his dress on <laughs> So as you can see that is way too huge on her right now, look, she's got plenty of bottom room. But I think, oh I don't know, do I change my order? What do we think? I'm thinking I'll probably just order this size and then use an old three foot nine um, for her for the summer. And we'll just have to cope with you not matchy matchy. <laughs> well that's all my silver dapples, tails washed, rugs fitted, got them in, tied them up. <laughs> board the dog <laughs> and next stage is to start training them and tomorrow I feel like we will get them in and start to well get Seb and Bridget back on their roller skis and out on the mountain board and Etta and Margot need to come out on the Segway so that we can start to sort of get a feel for what they're like in traffic just start showing them the big wide world what about you we'll start training you what do you think so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to hit like and subscribe if you want to follow these guys' journey. There they just look like a little bunch of scruffy fluffies at the moment. They will turn into something really quite special in the future and I'm really excited about them and love their little personalities and all their characters already. So it's going to be a good fun this summer, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to put them back in the field. Let's go.